Estado. Good morning, everyone, and welcome. My name is Luca Dondoni. I will be uh, moderating the event, the press conference this morning, and I will help you get to know more about the sixth edition of Salone del Mobile in Milan, which, of course, is taking place uh, right after a very long and difficult moment that we're still all very familiar with. Sixtieth edition that will have a lot to say to all of you and a lot to remember and a lot to remind you all for anything that will take place in June, between 7 and 12th of June. One more thing that I would love to emphasize to all of you attending in person, we're also having people listening to us on streaming from all over the world. And I would like to say hi to everyone. So thank you so much for being connected with us on the streaming. Thank you so much indeed. I would like first and foremost to welcome on a stage, and there could be any better moment, I would like to welcome President of Salone del Mobile, Mrs. Maria Porro. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. I'm, I'm excited, excited to be here. Well, we said, Maria, that not only we are having people attending in person, and we're so very happy to see everybody coming in person again. Uh, but let me just take a moment, perhaps, to say and to ask for a big round of applause uh, for a, a work of art uh, that we have developed. This is Teatro Lirico that was newly refurbished after 22 years. It is indeed one of the most important theatre for the city of Milan, entitled to Giorgio Gaber, who was staging many of its performances here. And once again, we're all here back in person to tell about a very important event. So, Maria, let's talk through the Salone. Salone is going to be so much important for many different reasons. Yeah, oh, yes, indeed. The sixth edition of Salone del Mobile is taking place this year. And yes, indeed, being here all together, will give a lot uh, more meaning to what we're going to be staging and have in June. But before we actually deep dive further into what the content will be for this Salone, I would like to spend a few words saying what we come from and what we came at. So we have experienced two very difficult year because of the, years because of the pandemic. And still, Salone del Mobile, back in September last year, we were able to organize a major event in person and we were actually able to do so thanks to a great collective effort from all the companies attending but also thanks to the institutions who have provided uh, their incredible support to this event. So I'd love to mention the foreign ministry I'd love to mention Italian trade agency with its director Longo and also the role of the Lombardy Regional Authority and uh, Councillor Bolognini on behalf of the governor is here today. Also, I would like to mention the crucial role of the municipality and thank you to Mayor Sala because, yes, we were kind of uh, providing casting new light on the city. It was, a, it was an unbelievable event thanks to the support of uh, Stefano Boeri and uh, all of his uh, team as well. So um, we've been, uh, they've been really forward looking and we've been able to make this step forward. So we have experienced Super Salone uh, last year and we're so willing now to celebrate the sixth year edition. But of course, uh, we shall also spend a few words uh, and, and say what, what is currently happening here in Europe. We're all actually shocked by the war in Ukraine. And actually, Salone uh, represents a kind of a crossroads of cultures uh, and means to build bridges amongst cultures and populations. So we believe that we, if we can really focus on the efforts and work of so many people actually delivering and crafting value in the Salone, it becomes even more important. Also, at the same time, we're acknowledging, of course, the human tragedy that is currently taking place, and, this, and we would like to provide 
provide our own contribution. Federlegno Arredo, through Federlegno um, Arredo e events, together with uh, Salone del Mobile, we've decided to uh, support, uh, to provide, uh, to provide our support to a UN agency, which is now currently working, one of the largest humanitarian uh, society, and we're also involving all of the design companies that will also provide their own contribution. And it couldn't be any different, of course. And President, you also mentioned a very important event. I was there. I'm sure many of you were there as well. And of course, we are, I'm referring to Super Salone last year. Uh, we we were uh, so glad, uh, actually, uh, before when we met before this very press conference, uh, how how we were proud, uh, how we were proud uh, uh, to actually be part of uh, such a a, a big event last year, and many people decided had decided not to come, but in the end, all of a sudden, something magic happened, and it was a it was actually a showcasing one of the best events ever. So I would like to welcome Mayor Sala on stage. Thank you. Thank you. Good morning. Welcome, Mayor. Unfortunately, for social distancing purposes, I, I would love to shake your hands, but we can't. So um, we briefly touch based on uh, Super Salone 2021. But of course, uh, we want to mention the 7th through 12th of June this year, Salone. I would like to start by thanking all of you, uh, of course. Uh, what we are doing now, it's a, actually it's an act of great responsibility. We're here. We try this and every time I find myself in similar scenarios you know I like a, to kind of go through the words that I'd love to share with people because you must have the right words and the first words are yes we're restarting yes we are restarting but we're actually now adapting to a very difficult situation a very bad a historical moment that we're experiencing that is exactly the case so I'd like to invite everybody here uh, to kind of overcome and to go beyond this idea of restarting. Yes, indeed, this is very true. We are restarting, but it is also the moment to express ourselves uh, through uh, through this very uh, special uh, words. So thank you all again for being here. I understand that, that you want to actually execute this 60th edition the best way possible. You're willing to support your city effectively, and it is necessary for us to do so. Uh, Milan is a very creative creative and laborious city and uh, and this may perhaps also account for uh, for uh, uh, the very explanation about what's going on in both Italy and Europe now we're all uh, deeply touched uh, by the war in Ukraine, uh, but most, more uh, broadly speaking, the world has really been divided uh, amongst uh, uh, kind of obsolete uh, democracies and uh, authoritarian uh, dictatorships uh, uh, that uh, actually are changing, uh, changing things so dramatically. And uh, and you know, at, at times, say uh, if you're if you're perhaps a kind of a skip. Uh, the rules, uh, you know, uh, it, things may actually look uh, easier in a, to a certain extent. But then we're very glad and happy when we come back to Italy and realize that we love to stick to the rules. Now, I, when it comes to the ability to innovate and crafting and creating new perspectives, well, we're talking uh, through 2050. Uh, for us to still be world leaders in our industry, well, we have to do something. We must do something for us to reach out to that moment. And I'm referring to, well, our ability, craftsmanship, technology, providing uh, services to citizens, welfare, industry. We have certain skills and abilities that others do not have. And I'm, I'm, not, I'm not saying uh, 
that what is currently happening in Middle East, China, Russia, well, it's the it's it's the kind of a gold mine, you know. Uh, but with respect to those countries, to that part of the world, well, let me say that we can also boost our skills, our abilities. So how about we try to find the best energy for us to actually have a golden future, same as uh, as our golden past, because indeed that has been the case. So. This is what I'm talking about, uh, creativity, willingness, uh, willingness to take on challenges. And this is why I'm very grateful to all of you today. And whilst I'm doing so, I can promise that from Milan, from municipality, we're actually going to do everything we can. Milan is still a city that is very much admired and loved all over the world. Uh, and how many foreign languages do you actually detect as you walk around? And it's not just tourists. Perhaps they are inhabitants. Uh, it is a, a real melting pot of languages and cultures. Such a huge quantity of uh, young students young people, more broadly speaking, they are still traveling around. And this is what it would allow us to win. But Salone and this week is very much perhaps is going to be uh, the most important week of the year. It has always been the case and always will be. It will be the very moment uh, when we are uh, Finding again courage and trust, and we will look into each other's with greater serenity. And actually, we'll do our best, and uh, your mayor will always be there for you. Thank you. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you so much for your kind words. I'd love to welcome Councillor Stefano Bolognini. Gracias. Thank you very much, Mr. Councillor. The mayor said something very important. Milan is the showcase of Italy, and Salone del Mobile is again a showcase in the world. Here we are. Welcome, Mr. Bolognini, Councillor of the Municipality of Milan. Thank you very much. Good morning, everyone. There is no question for me, but so. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, well, the words of the mayor impressed me very much. Uh, uh, it is uh, typical of uh, Milan and of the Lombardy to roll up your sleeve and uh, uh, work very hard. Uh, this is something that uh, not even the central government has always been able to do. Uh, but uh, uh, with Federlenio, we had a number of meetings in the last few months in order to understand uh, what we could do to restart at home and abroad, abroad. Uh, something that allowed us to, uh, uh, you know, do something. And uh, this is uh, what Salone del Mobile helped us do. And uh, the mayor said so, uh, even at this difficult time on the 7th of June, which is, by the way, my birthday, so it is difficult for me to forget it. If we uh, think about uh, last year, uh, the, uh, what happened last year, it was a restart hope uh, for the country. And we put together a number of properties and of characteristics that our territory has. Uh, so the private, the public administration, uh, the uh, fair, the uh, exhibition sector, uh, the um, uh, exhibition had eight billion produced eight billion uh, euro, and uh, uh, what we do in the fair is due to what the company did uh, that they were able to give our country a point of view uh, which was very important for us. And Salone del Mobile is the first platform in the world, and this is something that we need to keep in mind. I want to say three things: how important 
different uh, companies and design uh, are for Milan, but above all for the country. Uh, there are entrepreneurs, uh, there are people who work the wood, who, uh, there are designers, there are producers, and it is important to invest in them. Uh, and I am very glad that uh, I can, uh, uh, I had the mayor talk before me because um, it is important uh, to relaunch uh, professional training. Uh, these are extremely uh, important things also for the youth. Uh, also for the future, for their future. Uh, this week in Milan uh, is very important. And in Milan, we have uh, several important weeks. Um, and it is also important to you for the, to, into the future. And here, the politics has to make a step back. The Salone del Mobile is the first week, and then it is followed by many others. So I think it is an, a, um, uh, something, an anticipation Anticipation of what is going to um, uh, to happen in the rest of the, the year. There is the public administration, but here the private sector is most important. I would like to conclude by thanking all the entrepreneurs uh, who were so brave as to come to the exhibition um, uh, trade um, grounds, fairgrounds, uh, last year. And so if today, the Salone del Mobile is what it is. This is due to all those who believed in furniture and furnishing. And if we uh, want this sector to remain what it is, we have to have the far-sightedness and the, uh, the uh, bravery uh, to keep on working, to avoid that in the future uh, Milan will lose this excellence. So if we work all together very closely, we shall keep this uh, momentum. And I believe that uh, this year uh, is going to be the real restart. Our lifestyle has changed, and so we have to make an effort to uh, uh, keep on working so that the Salone del Mobile will take place in the years to come. So we hope that uh, the future is bright for us. Thank you very much. Uh, well, it is very nice to have a councillor uh, speak about uh, the uh, week of Salone del Mobile as the first week, because it makes us think uh, 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 like at, at a uh, pyramid, you know, the very tip of which is the Salone del Mobile, giving rise to the rest of the pyramid. Well, of course, uh, I have many questions. Now, uh, let's talk about uh, figures and the format. Let's talk about uh, the Salone del Mobile 2022. Well, the councillor already thanked uh, all, uh, everyone. I would like uh, to uh, thank the chairman of of uh, Fiera Milano, Mr. Bazzali in particular. They have worked uh, hand in hand with the Salone del Mobile, even last year for uh, Super Salone. And in the last few months, they have worked uh, um, together with us in order to postpone the uh, event. We decided together uh, to reposition the uh, week into June in order to have more visitors from the international community. So I would like to thank the Fiera uh, of Milan uh, to open up new roads, new pathways at a time when it, we thought it was so difficult to do. So thank you very much. Now let's come to the format of the exhibition. Uh, we see at our shoulders uh, the exhibition. The 60th edition occupies the whole uh, fairgrounds. We have uh, two biennial um, uh, fairs, Euro Cucina and International Bathroom Exhibition. We reconfirm uh, the uh, setup of the exhibition with uh, 1,200 um, uh, brands and exhibi exhibitors and almost 200,000 square meters of uh, fairground. Uh, as you can see from the layout, we position 
position the Salonis satellite at the beginning in, in order to uh, um, highlight it even more. It is a gem for the Salone del Mobile. And we uh, expect uh, high quality visitors because in uh, September we have seen it, and this is also reconfirmed by our uh, um, uh, people in the world. Uh, there is, um, uh, the, they are all willing uh, to discover the new ideas from the exhibitors because it is now two years that no exhibition is happening in presence, in person. So uh, there is, uh, everybody wishes uh, to walk in, on the fairground. And this is what is going, what we're going to see. Let's talk about sustainability very rapidly with a little sketch. And uh, uh, this shows you, it is a signature really, because immediately we uh, think about Mr. Cucinella, don't we? Well, the sector has started some time ago uh, moving towards ecological transition. Uh, all the companies of furniture and design have been investing into sustainability. The Salone, together with Super Salone, uh, um, underlined this sustainability um, by saying that our footprint, the environmental footprint, uh, had to be uh, reduced as much as possible. Now the challenge has become even more complicated, so we decided to play our role. How? By uh, devoting an important space uh, to sustainability, 1,400 square meters uh, entrusted uh, to architect Mr. Cucinella, who is going to illustrate uh, his project, with the idea that this is going to be an accelerator of projects underway. It is not only a showcase, but it is a meeting place. It is a source of inspiration for architects, for entrepreneurs themselves. And uh, this will help us understand where we are and accelerate what we want to do. So at the same time, we decided to share with entrepreneurs and uh, the people who did the fittings and the setup of the exhibition. Uh, some guidelines to help them decide the most correct materials and build the exhibiting areas according to these guidelines. This is the first step. It requires investments. Uh, but it is absolutely urgent. We have the possibility of uh, uh, underlining and um, bolden uh, uh, the philosophy of the Salone, which is no longer physical, but also digital. And uh, when you talk about uh, digital, you think about youth and the way young people uh, 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 are uh, so expert in uh, IT and uh, communication. And so here is the logo, here is the claim. Marva Griffin, uh, who is here with us, she is the soul, the very soul of a Salone Satellite, uh, decided two years ago to entitle the Salone uh, Satellite Design for Our Future Selves and Sustainability. And this is a paramount uh, um, message for those uh, who approach a design, the idea of uh, designing not for today but also for the future. That's why we made the decision and Marva decided to work on the layout to make it more inclusive, to make it is renewed completely with the concept of square. And it underlines the role of Salone Satellite as the opportunity to meet up uh, for startups and entrepreneurs to get together. This is something that happens only in Milan in Salone del Mobile. Uh, the whole satellite 
satellite graphics is conceived to be read also in the Braille and also touched. They, um, everything can be seen also by uh, those who can see well. So all the pathways through the satellite can be used by all. We want to be inclusive, and this is the very strong message that we uh, want to convey uh, to you. Nobody cannot be uninvolved in this uh, Salone Satellite. Thank you very much again, Mrs. Griffin. But when we talk about uh, young generations, or we talk about uh, people who want to express uh, their ideas. Ideas have to be helped uh, with substance. And so we enter into the world of the uh, scholarship devoted and entitled to Mario Armellini. Um, where is Armida? A round of applause to Armidia. She, she, she's a bit nervous. Emotion got the uh, best of her. Together with the uh, board of directors, so we wondered what we could do in order to keep the memory of Mario Armelline alive. And together with Armina, we discarded the idea of using something you know, old, and we wanted to do something instead very, very alive, very bright. So we created this scholarship for a master in furniture design, which is going to cover uh, half the cost uh, of uh, um, the master course for two students, an Italian one and one from abroad, in the Politecnico of Milan, um, entitled to Manlio Armellini. And we wanted to remind him and uh, his interest for the uh, youth. It is a way to keep all the brands uh, together and make the Salone del Mobile the cultural event, the cultural event uh, of paramount importance uh, for uh, the uh, sector in Italy. And so the scholarship was uh, uh, the best thing we could do. So we are happy to bring this vision forward. I would like to uh, mention talks as well as a, a, once again, we will get this chance to, uh, to have talks once again, because it is important to talk. It is important to have open discussions. Yes, indeed, as I said at the beginning, Salone is a catalyst, is a moment for gatherings, a like crossroads of culture. So we've organized three talks, three very short moments. Still, they will be very dense. And uh, those three talks uh, will be curated by three ladies, Maria Cristina Didero, uh, in continuity with their efforts uh, with Super Salone, uh, Lanza and Lessi. So topics that we will touch base upon. Chiara Lessi will speak through the 60 uh, years of history with Beatrice Lanza will explore digital barriers for the world of furniture and with Maria Cristina Didero we'll be talking through sustainability when it comes to people and people in relation to products. Talks, they will actually take place say, at the Fiera inside the pavilions. Uh, um, you mentioned the digital experience. Well, actually, the digital experience will help us a lot as uh, through our digital platform, we'll be able to still get across this content. So, so thanks to digital, we'll be able to convey contents more broadly. Um, now, I'm afraid of, of being lost uh, now. And uh, uh, of course, we do have a very full agenda this morning. So I would like to go back to creativity and how to best talk 
through creativity in this salone. So 60 years of salone, it, it is not a number that we may just skip or uh, pretend not to consider. So actually, thanks to Emiliano Ponzi, where we're actually able to celebrate these 60 years. Um, I would like to welcome uh, Mr. Emiliano Ponte on stage, is now, uh, is now getting his microphone. On the occasion of the sixth edition, we have decided to entrust such work, such effort to an illustrator, Emiliano Ponzi. He will tell us about the relationship between the city and Salone, how, uh, how it did evolve over years. Uh, now, I won't go any further as I don't want to take and I don't want to unveil any of his contents. Emiliano Ponzi is on stage. Thank you. Thank you, Maria. Well, yes, they were taking some time to put microphone on. No worries whatsoever. So, Emiliano, uh, we were already seeing, we're already witnessing some of your works, uh, the way you work, the way you create. Actually, there's one first question that springs to my mind, and that is, how can you possibly deliver on paper an object, an object in motion. As a salone, it might be also defined as that. I mean, salone has changed over 60 years uh, and it, it keeps changing as we speak, literally. That's very true. That's very true because uh, actually I've been entrusted with this unique responsibility to design and to illustrate posters. So we wanted to celebrate the 60th anniversary at its best. I, I'm so honored because I have been asked uh, to uh, to really get across the visual side of it. Uh, and uh, so we've been able to develop six posters and uh, the, the, the golden rules uh, were to stick to number 60 because we're still celebrating the 60th anniversary. And that is what we want to start from. So 60 appears on all posters and then uh, red, black, white, these are the key colors uh, and also the city of Milan uh, because of course even if Milan is is not is not your hometown uh, Milan is still the city welcoming Salone so of course you feel some sense of belonging even if you were not born here um, when it comes to the evolution uh, we're kind of the Darwinian uh, uh, idea of that so how has the world changed over the past six decades this is what we wanted to represent six posters to talk through six special moments and how things have changed over these six past decades. And then, what surprise, 2.0, the augmented reality. Thanks to an atelier of the of the great animators, they have made it possible for each image to actually become dynamic, to be animated, and something will happen. 60 will still be the key aspect, but there will be some additional magic. So, of course, to further create engagement with the audience. So it's not just watching, but it's literally stepping in and becoming part of that to some to some extent. And uh, so that was the the key the key goal for us. Uh, Maria G. Have a question for Emiliano. Why, why is it uh, that you called him on board? I know you are a great supporter of him as an illustrator. Well, allow me to say something. You have a, such a unique point of view and perspective. You're able to actually use poetry as you describe reality. And uh, you have some kind of a surrealism uh, to some extent, which is actually opens up uh, to uh, to what is hidden in reality. I love the way you, you very much deep dive uh, into topics and I know how difficult it can be to actually have a single illustration and how can you possibly represent 60 years of history in, in drawing. So yeah, you have to be able to summarize uh, quite effectively and that's why I've also mentioned the importance of magic. The role as an illustrator, well, is way more than draw, of course, uh, but it's finding uh, the space is finding a, is finding a way to project something else. So, in order to create a kind of a conversation, kind of a dialogue, if you if you will, so people celebrating on a terrace, for instance, so that is a that is a drawing. But of course, I want people to further to totally mirror into those people celebrating on the terrace. Uh, you know, well, actually, I've been through all of the images. 
and I love the one of the cathedral, of course, but you can actually see the city of Milan and its own signature in all of them. Thank you, Emiliano. Well, thanks to all of you. So, uh, President, we mentioned uh, Mario Cucinella earlier on has a sustainability topic. It's not something that we want to skip at all. We want to have a, a, a very direct, a very upfront relationship with this very topic. Mario Cucinella, if you can come on stage and tell us about to what extent sustainability will be protagonist of Salone uh, 2022. Okay, we'll allow for few seconds for Mario Cucinella to get his microphone and we're going to welcome him on stage in a moment. Eccoci qui. Un applauso per Mario. Eccomi, grazie. Thank you. Welcome, Mario. So, Mario, tell us about these atoms, the solving, and then uh, gathering themselves together inside the Salone. You will be a protagonist with a lot of uh, natural material to speak and, uh, and also through a special quote that you will unveil now. Yes, design with nature. That is the quote. I think it very much stands out for this idea that we want to get across uh, in terms of sustainability being fully tied to nature and also to Salone. Well, sustainability is often overused, in my view, uh, though we should spare these words, you know, because we have no other words to tell that we want to take care of sustainability. So we have to use it in a more appropriate manner. I think the meaning of words is something that we always want to look at. So the choice has been to tell through an installation what it might be the model of development in a planet which is uh, suffering from depletion of resources. So this is why we have identified uh, three themes, ecological transition, of course, it may sound uh, as a simplification, but we don't want to actually overlap the ecological transition with the technological transition. It is uh, absolutely something different. So actually matter can become uh, our uh, key aspect to work on. And then uh, on the on the evolution we have uh, spoken so extensively about house. How are we going to inhabit uh, our house in the future? And architects have deep dive into, into discussions and arguments on what the housing evolution is going to be. The digital, for instance, stepping in in our daily life. Well, perhaps we're no longer having that paradigm from the past where the city is a place, let's say, sees you working in a place, inhabiting in a different place where we have just seen that smart, that remote work, for instance, has, uh, has completely overwhelmed, has completely capsized this idea. So city can become a different place to, to live and experience. And then the third theme, or urban mine, so a city as a mine, as a mining place. We're now uh, being faced with numbers. Well, some of the recent numbers uh, that we're being faced with, it tells us that the weight of what we have built so far, it is actually greater than anything that the planet has developed so far. So we come to a point where, of course, we have to use less materials. We ha will have to reuse materials. We'll have to refer to natural sources. And actually, a some, so many companies from Salona have shown us that they can work with nature so much and really dropping this idea of everything that is being oil generated. So most likely we're going to be open a brand new era. And this is why is what I like to call our new friendship with nature. We have to recover and resume that friendship that we very much lost over the last two centuries. So such installation, as, as you said, Maria, will be a place where people will gather, where people will meet, and uh, you will come across some new materials, for instance, that we're using, and you are familiar with, with some of those. So we'll be having companies using fish scales uh, for walls uh, or mango cellulose or bamboo cellulose. They'll be using clay. They'll be using cotton. All of those materials that will that 
uh, are calling us uh, how nature can become again our key resource. And then the housing evolution, so uh, house and city. I think this is going to be one of the key themes that perhaps uh, is going to be spoken through during the talks. So how the house will evolve, uh, what we're currently being surrounded by when it comes to housing. I think that's, that can be a very positive message because it tells us how we can reimagine our life in our houses. There's one thing you said when we met. So a house is a cell of a more complex organism. If we change that cell, we completely overturn the organism. Yes, and I I do believe that this is a very interesting debate. Now, it, it, now irrespective of COVID, really, you know, the question was still there, was still there for us. So how we were reimagining to experience house and city. Uh, so on top of being part of a neighborhood because on the one side we want to be 15 minutes away from anything and I understand the Parisians say it uh, but actually our Italian cities uh, uh, may perhaps experience something different so um, we don't necessarily stick to this 15 minutes away from everything so we love proximity on the one side but then we love traveling all around the world so we have to combine to put these things together and try to aim for sustainability at the same time and then back to what we were saying not long ago, you know, such attention paid to sustainability and environment, you know, it may open up to new scenarios that perhaps will be picked by Salon in the future. I think Milan can still be at the very center, the very core of sustainability argument. And so, and it, why don't we really go for such a green diplomacy, so to speak, grouping together people who are happy and willingness to work on it. And I think we can do a lot around this uh, and group these resources all together. Now, we're currently being listened from all over the world. So this very word that you just said, the green diplomacy, so designing green diplomacy. So how about that? Well, it translates very interestingly. Yes, uh, although we are trying to give up uh, globalization to some extent every now and then, but there's still something that we have to come to terms with. Uh, you know, all countries, all continents, uh, we're all working on this same idea to improve our relationship with the planet. So there's common ground, perhaps for the first time. It's not just about trade and marketing, but it is about a, a really having common ground and common language or together to come to a point, hopefully I won't be too long, um, speaking through the collective organism. This is how we called our installation. And uh, perhaps uh, if we want to tackle sustainability, we want to build something that groups us together. Uh, 1,400 square meters, so quite a large area. It will be an organism grouping together many different components and elements. So they will group and actually deliver, create an installation. And tomorrow they will be dismantled and uh, they will perhaps uh, populate all the venues or the premises, schools. Um, laboratories. So this organism, which will become as one in Salone, will then disassemble itself and uh, and be reused elsewhere. So we will be reusing and kind of recycling all of these. So. Um, I, I, I love this idea from the very beginning, not only about the storytelling, you know, about the narrative of, a, of, of, of the green, of the sustainability, as we're all aware of what the problem is. And we're becoming even more guilty because we are fully aware and not doing enough for it. So we know we're aware of the issue. I think problem, the problem is that, and now we've come to the point when the world community is gathered, and it is a peaceful community, of course, so it, it won't just be a place to visit exhibitors, but it will be a place for gathering. So let's group all together, let's gather all together. Together we'll see exhibitors, we'll see furniture, and we'll be united through this installation. Thank you. Thank you so much. We'll see you at the Salone. Now. 
we invite uh, to the stage uh, to get into the idea of the Salone Satellite, which is an incubator and the place where things happen within the Salone del Mobile. Cristina, Celestino, and Sebastian Herkner. Okay, and I leave the stage and then you come back. Okay, thank you. Eccoli qua, penso li abbiano già microfonati. Okay, they are getting the mics. They have arrived to Salone and from Salone uh, they started, uh, they exploded their career, they developed their career. So welcome, good morning, Cristina and Sebastian. Well, clearly I cannot but uh, ask you how all of this uh, uh, was uh, uh, started and why you were attracted by Salone. I participated in the Salone in 2012 and it was my first challenge in the design world and also as an, as an, an entrepreneur. I studied architecture and then I had a passion for design and interiors, a total uh, project starting from the shell, going to the details, the handle and everything else. Uh, I got in depth in the details of products studying it very freely without any constraints, letting myself be guided by my sensitivity and aesthetics, I collected pieces of design and collected them just for the need I felt to live the uh, objects and see them from close. Uh, and then I got interested in companies who were working matters and material to go from design to product. Then it was fundamental to decide uh, to participate in Salone Satellite and move to Milan because I don't come from Milan. I was working in Florence first, and then I moved to Rome. But when I moved to Milan, the impact of the city was very strong. I cultivated this passion for design, but experiencing personally the Salone uh, del Mobile and uh, this event that, uh, you know, fills the life of uh, the city was a real experience. Then I got in touch with the Salone Satellite, was selected by Marva, Mrs. Griffin, and so uh, I put myself to the test uh, without any expectations because I was very new to design. Uh, I was coming from the architecture world. I presented a number of products that I had some craftsmen make for me. They were in glass, iron, composite materials, Kevlar, carbon. And it was a beautiful moment to talk to other designers at international level and also with Sebastian. Uh, Sebastian was not a participant in the same year, but I met him at, uh, uh, through uh, Salone. Satellite uh, Salon, because, because obviously yeah. we, we, we are speaking about this kind of thing all around the world with the world connected with us thanks to the streaming, but you were just an example of somebody that is coming from abroad. Yeah, absolutely. I, I came the first time to Salon in general, like 15, 16 years ago with university, with my university from Offenbach. And I, we had a small presentation. I really felt in love with the vibe and the design and the city and the whole event. And then I participated or applied for, for a place at Salone Satellite at Marva Griffin and I got the reply, it, I think it was January 2009 and then I had a couple of months till April uh, to work on the novelties and one of these was the bell table here on the right. So this was the presentation 2009 and I, participated, la sua di che ha fatto. Yeah, and I participated three times in a row and uh, the portrait actually is not a new one, no? it's, it's 12 years old approximately so, so that was from the time and I was still sitting in that office till last week. I just moved to a bigger one. <laughs> okay. So it, 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 it took a while and it was an amazing start at Salone Satellite really to get in contact with journalists, with companies, with companies especially from Italy but also 
all over the world, you know, and I think it's the most important thing is really the networking to bring the people together, it's the communication and now I really enjoy always to go to this back to this place and now we have the, the pole position you have seen in hall one and three and for me it's, it's really interesting to see the creativity, the culture of all the people from all the world to participate there and I think that's uh, always so important really to support the young designers even they had no support yeah. the last two years because yeah. there was no big venue and Satellite is the, the biggest one in this case. And yeah, if you were, so I can say that you just come out from your just little tiny camera, as we say, that yeah. little tiny room, little room. Exactly. And it okay, it in Italy we say cameretta, okay? Yeah. So you just built your own <laughs> things, you come to Milano, you just go outside, watch it. And now we just move it, to a, a bigger one also, yeah, and it's so important to be in contact, to stay in contact, to bring the good people mm -hmm. together to work on a vision about sustainability, about respect, about culture, about... Yeah, um, responsibility, and uh, and I think the biggest also social sustainability in this case is really to to network to to work together. Grazie a Sebastian, grazie a Cristina. Come avete sentito in pochissime parole quando parlavamo prima. As you have heard, this is the incubator. They got out of their little rooms uh, of young people, even like Cristina, who didn't live in Milan, but uh, was thinking about Milan. Uh, and then she encountered the Salone del Mobile. Uh, she encountered the city that experiences and works for the Salone del Mobile throughout the year. Then they there was this cross fertilization with other people um, and this uh, gave them the possibility of developing their ideas therefore talking about ideas talking about furniture of course but then uh, participating in the uh, satellite uh, allows young people to take one step at a time and even two steps at a time and reach success so uh, Please uh, applaud the uh, Salone and keep on coming to Salone. Thank you very much. Well, now we have somebody known, somebody the people from Milan know very well, Mr. Davide Rampello. Uh, no, I'm not going to sit down because you don't have your chair, your usual chair, do you? Uh, okay, Davide. Well, first of all, you are curator, artistic director. This is your role and we want to stress it. Uh, here in the Salone, there is something uh, that is called uh, Scatola Magica, the magic box, and I'll give you a taste of it. All'inizio nessuno pensava che sarebbe stata una rivoluzione. Voglio dire, abbiamo cambiato il modo di comunicare, no? Comunicare, no? Sì, è mettere in comune. Ma la comunicazione non è solo quello che noi diciamo, ma il modo in cui noi lo diciamo. E lo devi dire con tutte le parole, tutto il trasporto che hai. Anche se non saprei mai se l'hanno capito. Now then, what is the magic box, La Scatola Magica? It is a project. Uh, we set out a number of words. They are things, words are things, uh, uh, youth, uh, 
network in Milan. So we thought of entrusting these words to one of the arts which is able to represent the cinema with images, music, and storytelling. We took 11 Italian interpreters and we put them inside a magic box. But this box, just because it is magic, uh, does not uh, return as just a storytelling, but the words that have become projects inside the Salone del Mobile, because they are a constituent of the charter of values. And this is very important. The Salone has uh, uh, chosen these uh, concepts and uh, these uh, uh, expressions as the foundation and uh, guidelines for them. So one of the words is Milan as a place. But to stress, to underline uh, this wonderful city, this beautiful building where we are in, we are going to be welcomed by another two great institutions, uh, thanks uh, to the sensitivity of James Bradbury and uh, the masterpieces uh, of the Academy of Brera, one of the highest uh, references in the life of Milan and not only of Milan. But uh, it is important for me to talk about another protagonist uh, who is not as known but uh, as poetic is uh, the marionette company Colley. And so we're, we're going to be welcomed by these two interpreters. And being a magic box, we are going to be surprised. And I'm not going to spoil this surprise. But before I leave you, um, I want to reference to to refer to uh, what uh, has been said, and in particular by the mayor, who talked about the relevance of the city, the relevance as a an international reference, but also as a place of our love. Uh, I want to mention a person who fell in love with Italy, of Venice, of Naples, uh, and of Milan, William Shakespeare, uh, who in the last uh, work, The Tempest, with Prosperous, who is the Duke of Milan, ends with a sentence which is extraordinary, and which is the manifesto of the new men that completes the Renaissance concept um, that comes before uh, Bacon and Galileus. And it says, we are made of the same substance as dreams. This means that we can transform ourselves based on our dreams. And because the dream is the start of a project, I think that this, the wish, the most extraordinary wish that I can uh, give to uh, this edition of the Salone, the dream of becoming what we uh, are, uh, uh, want to be through the project. So let me mention the name of the directors, Francesca Archibucci, Papi Corsicato, Davide Rampello, Vilma Labate, Bruno Bonsetto, Luca Lucino, Claudio Giovannesi, Gianni Canova, Donato Carrisi, uh, Daniele Cipri and Stefano Mordini. An excellent floor. Thank you very much. And I uh, call uh, to the stage uh, the chairwoman Maria Porro because we need to mention something that needs to be mentioned. Thank you, David Arampello. Thank you to all the filmmakers who have provided their this their contribution to this very site-specific installation, which is, of course, a surprise, something that will be unveiled the moment you see the magic box. So next to Palazzo Reale installation, Salone, 
will also have an ongoing uh, collaboration at the same time with the Opera House Teatro La Scala in Milan. This will take place uh, through a special gala night at the very Sunday before we open Salone. Uh, that will take place with two uh, stars, really, principal dancer uh, uh, Roberto Bolle. He will dance for the audience, and Lorenzo Viotti, he will conduct the Philharmonic Orchestra in La Scala for that very special occasion. So he will be, it will surely be a special and moving emotional moment. Yes, we're talking through excellence here, so I'm sure this will be the case. And because the relationship with the city is crucial for us, we are happy to carry on with the welcoming project, Accoglienza, collaboration with the municipality and with Fiera Milano. Thanks uh, to some design schools and architecture schools uh, uh, based in Milan. Actually, we will be able to locate in some, uh, in some specific areas uh, throughout the city. We will locate, we will have some students who will help visitors uh, to orientate themselves uh, all around the city. And also, they will provide instructions on how to reach out to events as well as the Salone itself. Nuova Academia, Istituto Europeo di Design, AAD, and of course, a School of Design at the Polytechnic in Milan. It will be approximately 100 students who will provide this very special welcoming to the audience from all over the world. Thank you. Thank you, President. I will still kindly ask you to be on stage as we are now uh, welcoming uh, Claudio Feltrin, uh, President Federlegno Arredo. We will close with Claudio Feltrin our press conference today. Would you like to take a seat? I can leave you on stage. I will be back in a in moment. Don't leave me alone. Do not leave me alone. I will leave you alone. Come on. Come on over here. As you prefer. I will be standing. Uh, oh, this, this comes as unexpected. Uh, of course, unexpected when it's on air. So I will be speaking here from, from the back. And I have questions. First question is for yourself. So the trend of furniture industry, well, as we speak, as of today. Well, that is a kind of a challenging question. I would like to step back for a moment so that I can share the uh, numbers from 2021. Beautiful, great results. Ava, 49 billion turnover, growing by 14.3%. Expo has increased uh, year on year, well, with respect to 2019. Expo has uh, increased by 7.1%, uh, and Italy was reporting an increase by 18.5%. These are numbers that really makes us make us happy. Uh, these were numbers that we were aiming for. We meant, of course, uh, to uh, to overcome the pandemic, uh, which of course uh, has uh, impacted heavily all industries worldwide. We're happy. Twenty one is over now. And, and, and actually, the new year started with some worries. Back in 2021, at the very end, uh, some great tensions had already been experienced uh, energy-wise uh, and also in terms of scarcity for raw materials. And we had uh, some worries, indeed, for 2022. Now, of course, uh, and unfortunately, we're experiencing uh, something that, of course, is not going to help and is only going to generate and trigger further worries. So future holds a, is out there as a mystery, uh, unfortunately, and we're all committed to find a best solution. Well, I am fully positive that the President will agree with me that the values uh, which are embedded in uh, Salone will still support the industry. Of course, values are there, and uh, we keep uh, reconfirming the leadership that Salone has been able to build, create, 
and uh, and still have in place with an endless number of companies. And uh, we are a platform that nobody wants to give up to because of the showcasing capabilities. And we are also now supposed to react right away to something that was completely unexpected up until a month ago. So what is the best opportunity? What's the best occasion for those companies who have a very strong economic relationship with all those countries hit by the war? So what's the best occasion perhaps to find new avenues through Salone? That's very, it could be a kind of a quick fix, if you will, that would allow them to still carry on safely and in a healthy uh, manner. Of course, we will, they will all hopefully take advantage of this beautiful event that after two years we are finally able to uh, set out once again the same way as we've always been. I'm pretty positive that next Salon will be successful, still bearing in mind the, the external circumstances. I have one last question. And uh, and that is a, a question uh, that is kind of the uh, leitmotiv uh, for our meeting today. So sustainability in this industry, sustainability is something that we're aiming at, that we're looking at more and more. We want to inhabit a sustainable world more and more. That is, of course, a mantra. And I, I think nobody can deny that this is indeed the new pathway that we've all undertaken recently. And I've heard somebody say now through this new scenario, we'll forget about the ecologic transition and so on. Well, that is not absolutely true. I don't agree on that. It is right in this very moment where you want to commit further on and actually increase your efforts in trying to make the best use of raw materials because we have a scarcity of that. So, of course, this will further perhaps speed up our transition, that transition that we're talking about. Numbers have been mentioned by Cochinella earlier on, and they tell us about how big is the challenge. Challenge as well as opportunity, I would reckon. And uh, we have uh, recently um, published a, a kind of guideline for all of our companies uh, to face with this transition. We do still firmly believe it would be a great opportunity for us uh, to strive for greater innovation in light of sustainability and to make the future as brilliant as the past. President Maria Parra, I would like to leave the floor to close the press conference. Maria, thank you, Claudio, for your words. The role of Salone will be surely to open up new avenues, new markets, new opportunities. Our efforts in collaboration with the foreign ministry and all the players involved, FIERA, municipality, will do our utmost for sure to make this moment a, a very unique one to deliver value for everybody. I would also like to take the opportunity to thank our sponsors who have been supporting us for a great for a long time now. They are also fully committed to sustainability. Banca Intesa, Ca del Bosco, Cafe and Aqua San Bernardo. So even in choosing sponsors, uh, uh, Salone is showing how big this effort is and how global and comprehensive. I can only say that, uh, of course, now, to the sake of journalists, to the benefit of journalists, uh, all speakers are available to meet up next for interviews. And of course, I'll be meeting you all uh, 7 through 12 of June 2022. Also celebrating the birthday of Councillor on June 7. Yes, apologies, I said May as opposed to June. Uh, you must have seen a rendering from Mario Cochinella project uh, out there in the foyer. You see a small model as well. So actually can have a kind of a hands-on, although through a miniature, uh, have a, a preview of what's going to be like 7 through 12th of June 2022. And also refreshments available for all of you. Thank you. Thank you, President. Thank you, all the attendees.